the regular season ACC co-champions meet on this neutral setting, Turf Field, Charlottesville, Virginia. It's the one seed and six consecutive tournament champion, North Carolina, taking on their tobacco road rival in Duke in search of their first ACC championship. And good evening, everyone. I'm Leah Sacondo alongside Suzanne Bush. And uh, Suzanne, as we look at this matchup, the ACC goalkeeper of the year in Piper Hamps, they're stingy, only three uh, goals roughly, a third in the country as far as defense is concerned. Tough to score on the Blue Devils. Yeah, the Blue Devils defense has been absolute lockdown material, averaging a .91 goals against average. They've garnered eight shutouts on the season, but while they're only giving up eight goals a game, they're going up against an offense that takes 15 shots per game. So a tall test today, and I'm telling you, this North Carolina offense, they can really turn defense into offense in a hurry. Their ability to put on a high press together, Leah, squeeze opponents to make decisions on ball that they are not ready to make. With those snap decisions, usually come mistakes. And Carolina so good at exploiting those mistakes, they quickly turn them into opportunities to score with plenty of numbers around the ball. We're approaching the pass back, Duke and Carolina. It's a classic for the ACC title after these messages. Welcome back to the 2023 ACC Field Hockey Championship. It's Duke and Carolina, the regular season co-champions. They have taken the field and we are set to go. Duke looking to make some history tonight in the run for their first ACC Championship. This is their third attempt in a title game for that run. And of course, Carolina has 25 to their record and six consecutive. Piper Hampsh in goal for Duke. She has been phenomenal all year, has improved by leaps and bounds since her sophomore year, Suzanne. Yeah, Piper Hampsh has been absolutely exceptional, as has Maddie Kahn, just steady in the backfield for the Tar Heels. Getting this start, Maddie Kahn making her 16th start of the season. Carolina taking the pass back. They were looking to try to pin Duke deep in their own territory, but uh, the Blue Devils not fooled by that one bit. Side in for Duke, wearing the white jerseys tonight on the field. Good quick movement of the ball, cut off there by Hawk. Hannah Miller there to try to break it up, a little bit too aggressive with the stick. So it goes back and Carolina trying to change fields here quickly, Suzanne. Well, and that's what they do, right? Two-touch passing. That's the foundation that Karen Shelton laid for this uh, UNC team. Aaron Matson just taking that and running with it. Good track down there by Sienna Ricardo, number eight for Carolina. Here it is up to Yasmina Smolinars, but ran out of real estate, so Kiara Curlin will inbound it for Duke. Playing a little give and go action there with Hannah Miller as well. Charlie Van Orshot. Carolina with the ball here. Smolinars tries to save it. Van Orshot trying to work quickly. She does on the restart. And with that, let's take a look at success, Suzanne, with your blueprints for Duke. For Duke, you know, drawing corners is going to be mission critical. You know, they only scored eight goals with a 7% success rate last season. You know, Duke really has narrowed their focus on APC reps. It has been a difference maker for them, Leah. 24 goals on 105 APCs. That's a 22% success rate that they've had this season in defensive composure. You know, we know that Carolina wants to move the ball fast, but this Duke defense has just stayed composed, 
calm, cool, collected the entire season. They're going to have to do it again tonight, Leah. A lot of variables here, and as a, a former player out on this field, uh, Suzanne, the butterflies are there. You're trying to keep everything composed, but like you, you want to bring it 150% right now. What? How, how do you tone it down just to? To, to kind of bring things back to level playing. Yeah, it's all about possession at this point, right? You want to keep possession. You want to get a couple touches on the ball. Let yourself settle into the game. Come up with a few interceptions. You know, again, mount a few successive possession passes, and that'll help really, you know, you'll be able to take a deep breath and say, okay, we're now playing the sport we love. Mm -hmm. It's just another game, as uh, Duke likes to say, another nameless, faceless opponent. We just need to play our game. Tough spot as Duke has everything locked down into that corner and can use that sideline and end line as an extra defenders. Some of Carolina gets out of it, brings it up to Bruning. Hannah Miller doesn't want to commit, but she's got a wide stance right now. Here she comes. Hannah flying around with some support. <laughs> Ball of energy takes it away. Well, and that's why she loves to put that high press on, make the defense, make quick decisions, put their head down. That's when she crashes on that press. A little bit too aggressive on the backside there by Peyton Worth. Long, hard whistle. A little bit more of a preventative whistle than anything else. Well, and it's, you know, again, it's going to be chippy, right? It is the second Friday in a row these two teams have met for a title game. And, Leo, UNC came into last week's matchup with Duke not getting any yellow cards. Well, they left that game with two. There were five total cards that night just between the two teams. So lots of physicality. Obviously, emotions are running even higher tonight um, with the title game at stake here. So that's definitely something we're going to keep an eye on. Good hard held whistle there giving the Blue Devils the opportunity the delay will allow them to get some numbers into the circle Hannah Miller number three with the game winner in the semifinals against Louisville Yeah, that was a beauty of a goal, a great crossing ball by co-offensive player of the year in the ACC, Elena McVeigh, crossing that ball. And just a one-touch redirect by Hannah Miller in front of the keeper. And that was the lone score of that game. Big ball downfield. Looks good. A little bit too dangerous there. Our officials tonight, Lauren Bruce, she's the lead official. And on the far side of the field, Shannon Taylor, congratulations to them to be selected as the umpires for this game. You see what's at stake tonight. Seventh straight ACC championship would be on the line here for Carolina and for Duke, their first. Duke's first appearance back in a championship game since 2011. Just outside the circle coming in. Last time we had co-champions, as you see, the card is up now. We are back to full strength, and Bruning will come back on the field. Last time we had co-champions that actually met back up for the ACC championship. You have to go all the way back to 2006. Wake and Maryland. Wake coming away with the ACC championship then. Tip ball by Curlin, almost taken away. And then the two teams met again in the NCAAs. Maryland coming up on the high side on that one. Four to two. 
Certainly not uncharacteristic in the ACCs for teams to meet up in the ACC tournament and then Final Four weekend, especially when you have best conference in the country. Nice takeaway by Josephine Paldi. Josephine Paldi is is one of the players, she, she just grinds it out and, and she she does her job. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely a role maker, you know, a role player, but always involved, but just, you know, she's not gonna be the flashiest player. She's not gonna be the Elena McVay. She's not gonna be the Hannah Miller who's running all over the field, working as hard as she can. Like she just flies under the radar, but she gets things done. Sets it up. Yeah. Sets it up. 100%. In the mix. Worth comes back over to Bruning, trying to work the opposite side of the field is Sana Hawk. Hawk with a nice move, flips it ahead, taken back away. Everybody taking a big breath right now. It's been a long day. These teams were very anxious. We had an opportunity to <laughs> Be with them this afternoon, their final walkthroughs. Try to keep it loose, have some fun, but run through their systems. Long ball downfield for the release. There's Duke head coach Pam Buston, three time ACC coach of the year, and most recent here in 2023. Congratulations, that ball up into. Uh, you know, it's it great to see it. Pam telling us that they kind of reevaluated everything in 2019, especially again after COVID and made some changes and hard work, persistence paying off here. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, even from last year to this year, Leah, this was a team that went 0-6 in ACC play. They did not get an at-large. They didn't get to see a whole lot of postseason play other than one game at ACCs. And, you know, what Pam said is this team stayed the course. Obviously, fifth-year seniors, Mary Harkins and Hannah Miller coming back. They said, we have unfinished business. Um, but, yeah, to your point, you know, the staff took accountability. The players took accountability. Everybody took a really good look in the mirror and said, you know what? We're not going to have another season like that. And they stayed the course. They have worked so hard, and they are reaping the rewards this season, Leah. Working so hard, and only 18 goals allowed as Hawk with a, a nice poke check there. 18 goals allowed this season after 38 a year ago. A little bit of what we had anticipated here. We've gone about 10 minutes here in the ACC championship game, and neither team with a shot right now is the defense wants to get into those 25s, really making it very difficult. There's Erin Matson seeking what would be her sixth ACC championship, five as a player, and her first potentially as a head coach. We saw Erin at the end of practice not uncharacteristic of any of these coaches. They still get involved. Aaron with a stick, and we were kind of joking with her about she's going to find a way to get on the field tonight. Well, and that's what competitors want to do, Leah. Absolutely. They want to compete. You know she's chomping at the bit to put back on her Tar Heel uniform, but... Kelly Smith coming back a little bit now, trying to bait Duke's defense, who's staying nice and spread. Siska Bruning does a nice job, Suzanne, just baiting the defense for that foul. Well, and when, when we asked Coach Matson about Siska Bruning, you know, she said she may not be the most vocal player on the field, but she is absolutely brilliant, technically and tactically. She's just a fun player to watch.
The ACC Fall Championships continue Sunday. Men's soccer quarterfinals starting at 2 Eastern continue Wednesday. The semifinals, all the matches right here on the ACC Network, the ESPN app, the home of the ACC Championships. Chris Paderbaum in the game. Number 16 on the outside. Dixon with some room. Better watch out from the backside. Logan Clouser is there. Charlie Bruder, the ACC Freshman of the Year, number two, is that ball will go back to. Duke not giving five. Hannah Miller settles it down nicely. It's just a great ball there by Joe Veen out of the backfield. Connecting with Hannah Miller up that left-hand side. Here's Clouser. She's got McVeigh. McVeigh's got some room to work. Petty Cobb comes out, plays the ball nicely plays it any differently. Entirely different situation. Yeah, you know, she definitely went for the ball. The contact was incidental, and she has the right to play the ball, regardless if McVeigh pops up and over her, like she did. Nice job by Duke. They clambered down just a little bit defensively. McVeigh is leaking ahead there. If they can figure out how to get to her, first quarter opportunity is Hannah Miller's stick was hooked. And a great drive into the top of the circle by Miller. She saw just a little bit of space, and so she utilizes that speed to just take that ball there, able to get that stick obstruction and get the corner call for the Blue Devils. First one of the game. So the first real opportunity here, Leah, offensively for either squad. Duke fourth in the conference on goals off corners as Hannah Miller sets up. Scoring on 16 of 19 on the season. See the battery set up up top. Little confusion. Here's McVeigh. She's got some room to walk in. Big shot. Miller was there on the post, but couldn't knock it home. Yeah, you saw Miller just a little off balance, was leaning back instead of forward, and unfortunately couldn't connect with that crossing ball from McVeigh. is shine here in the first. We are scoreless. The ACC Championship after one. A flashback to last Friday night as things repeat itself in a crazy way. Duke got on the board first, Suzanne, and it, it was probably one of the most technical, best games that we've seen all season. Hawk responds, and then here's the game winner. Yeah, just super crisp passing on for both squads. You know, and a scoreless first three quarters. It was a flurry of action in the fourth quarter. Obviously, UNC coming out on top, but boy, that was a beautiful 60 minutes of hockey. Absolutely, in a packed house in Chapel Hill. But tonight, we're on a neutral site. Makes things on a nice, even plane for everybody. And Katie Dixon with the game winner on that one. Is you see Riley Heck? Josephine Paldi and Hannah Miller getting set here for the second quarter of play. Some of your thoughts 
on, on how the, the ebbs and flows of that first quarter of action. Yeah, you know, we saw both teams with some decent possession in the midfield, but Leah, it's going to be a, a midfield battle today. Both teams with extremely stingy defenses. We've talked about them both, you know, and so it, it's going to be an open field goal, I do believe. I don't think it's going to come from a corner tonight, and I definitely think it's going to be a one goal game. Duke trying to smash that ball away they do get the call and they will have the side in here again this is duke's fourth appearance in a championship game last one in 2011 this is unc's 30th appearance in this the 41st acc championship this is an automatic bid tonight on the line there's no question that these two teams will continue to dance yes and the very likely could depending on how the committee sees it could dance again yeah. Yeah, absolutely. These these teams, regardless of the outcome today, they both are absolute shoe-ins. I think they're both going to get hosting bids. Leah, I understand that that seems crazy being so close in proximity to one another. However, they have both earned the right to have that home field advantage, in my opinion, Leah. Yasmina Smolinars showing some tactical spin move skills, 360 skills, but it ball will go back to... Duke. Smolinar is nice. a, a player that Aaron Matson was just singing the praises of today. Just has really come alive this season, blossomed, just feels the confidence finally. Like, you know, Aaron Matson said, I always knew she had the skill. She just needed to believe in herself, and she's really started to believe in herself, and it shows in her gameplay. Good takeaway once again. Here's Logan Clauser, has got some room to work, has to cut back to the inside. The poke away and the takeaway. And quickly it goes back to Carolina as Heck settles and rolls. Back tackling and support going to be so important tonight. Peyton Worth couldn't get that hot ball settled on her stick. trying to cut through, held up just a little bit there by Van Orshad as Yasmina Smolinars gets the call. It'll be a long hit, and see Scott Bruning will roll it around. Here's the chaser. <laughs> Hannah Miller, number three. You're gonna trademark that uh, for the chaser. The chaser. <laughs> Never give up attitude of number three in white. That's for sure. Hit Miller's roommate, Mary Harkins, taking the shot. Very good friends. Both decided to come back for their fifth year. Here's Heck trying to get around Mary Harkins. When Heck makes that back in move, trying to protect herself between the ball and the body there, she has to make a quick decision because if she doesn't, the call is going to go quickly the opposite way. Can you kind of explain what she has to do with that ball to keep her feet going? Yeah, you know, you got to keep your feet moving. You got to keep the ball moving, essentially. It, you know, you can turn your back as long as the ball is moving. But as soon as that ball stops, then it's an obstruction call going the opposite direction. Small and ours try to feed it across, goes all the way across and right in the hands of Paul D on the opposite side. Quick restart. Comes a bouncing ball, gotta be careful of those. Settled back up top, looking for the corner call. Gotta continue and play on. Had they played through, they might have gotten the call on that. But look out, here comes Duke as McVeigh falls but gets the pass off to Logan Clouser. 
Just a little bit too far ahead to get that obstruction call, but good idea. ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips in the house tonight. Commissioner Phillips uh, was gracious enough to spend a few minutes with us up here. He was telling us he loves the game of hockey. He's been following it and uh, really can't say enough of the play of the teams, especially this year in the parody. Yeah, you know, and he got to talk to ACC Coach of the Year Pam Buston last week. You, you talk about, you know, a commissioner that believes in this sport, loves this sport. Obviously, him being here tonight means the world to these student athletes as well and seeing his support. Traveling man for sure attended 20 football games over the first nine weeks of the season. Still have men's soccer action ahead and women's soccer action. Of course, the football championships coming up that first week in December. But here tonight, he will be presenting the ACC championship crown at the conclusion of this game. These two teams with familiar foes this season. And a good stretch, of course, they're always looking to have that most difficult strength of schedule. Duke with tough losses to Northwestern and UNC and UVA and the common opponent UVA in the loss column. And of course, Liberty has been a little bit of a nemesis the last few seasons to UNC, as well as Iowa very early on. But those tough games certainly make you better, and you welcome that competition. Held whistle, held whistle, and they got the shot off, so no corner to be called. Well, and Liberty, definitely a formidable opponent. Best keeper in the country. We've got some outstanding fifth-year seniors coming back, anchoring that team. Now keep in mind coming into this game tonight, Duke has gone over 129 minutes shutting out opponents. And they have gone the first 22 minutes of not allowing UNC to a shot here. Just outside the circle coming in. Gonna have a corner called. The warning was there that hit before so you've got to go to the corner and they do it'll be the first quarter opportunity for UNC Tar Heels third in the conference in goals off corners 13 of 16 they have scored on this year. Peyton Worth getting set to insert. As the defense for Duke sets up alongside Piper Hamsch. Lots of striker options for UNC. They're opting for Smolinars and Bruning. Bruning with a great sweep. And it is Bruning and the tip by Worth. Just a little bit too wide. Well, and Peyton Worth actually may be a little too narrow in that as opposed to extending the cage. And a quick restart here for UNC. Maneuvering through 5 p.m. traffic at 7.30. Wow. <laughs> Didn't get the call there. Yeah, heck with not a whole lot of support. Was just trying to get somebody on the defense. It was a 1v3 to poke at the ball, send that ball over the end line to get that 23 meter coming in. Smolinars with a big hit 
across to Rome Ricardo, co-captain. Last run for Rome as well here as Kleja career winds down. She talked a little bit about how much she enjoys working with younger girls with aspirations to play and even enjoys umpiring. So who knows, we might see Rome Ricardo one day umpiring one of the ACC championship games. And that would Wouldn't be a be treat, surprised. yeah. What a week 10 ACC football lineup we have for you tomorrow. It starts at noon with North Carolina hosting Campbell and the number 15 Louisville. They've been hot all year against Virginia Tech. Look out, it's in Hampshire's feet. Is it alive? Does it stay alive? She's trying to keep it alive and it will be a long hit. And then the day will wrap up tomorrow with Miami taking on NC State at eight. All three games you can catch on the ESPN app as well so you can watch it from anywhere. We see Duke now really trying to pin a UNC to a sideline. Good flick inside, a little bit short, long hit. Piper Hamsch back there, directing traffic. Katie Dixon trying to get that call outside the circle and McVeigh there staying low, forcing that ball to the outside. Turnover, Duke trying to push some numbers ahead. sustained a possession, Suzanne, in this quarter over the 50. Yeah, they've been playing a whole lot of defense. And a quarter called. Duke not happy with that. Kira Curlin can't believe the call. Kira Curlin, an exceptional healthy piece to Duke's success on defense this year. Worth will insert once again. And Leah, now looking at UNC, they got Charlie Bruder in a striker position. You talk about a player with some velocity on her shot. Keep an eye on her as well. Went to Bruder four times in the semifinals. And a rocket of a shot straight on that's wide and hard and out. At halftime, Suzanne and I will take a look at the big picture. The NCAA is being announced on Sunday night at 10 p.m. We'll break down the at-larges. Season flew by this year. Oh my gosh. Time flies when you're having fun, Leah. True story. True story. It's a good ball that Unfortunately, just a little bit too hot for anybody to handle, so Carolina will let it go and take the hit back out the opposite way. Both teams doing a good job, not allowing the speed to leak out. Any fast break opportunities thus far. Well, and UNC this second quarter has just been working better in small spaces. Mm -hmm. Duke having trouble outletting the way they did in the first quarter. 
big, big ball across. It was too high. So we'll go back out where that infraction was on the side in. Train slap there are the sticks. Can't do that. Ball goes back to Duke. We'll come back out in the alley area. And you see this press from UNC. It's a 1v4. Under a minute to go here in the second. Good pressure there by Clouser allows Curlin to get it. And Bruni. Seems to always be there in the right spot. Here's Miller. She's got Clouser on the far post. Yikes. And that'll do it. We expected it to be tight. We expected it to be defensive oriented. Duke and Carolina have not disappointed. Yeah, lots of defense between the 25s. It's been exactly what we expected, Liam. We'll be back with more on the half after these messages. Commissioner Phillips came to visit us with a special guests and that would be the ACC trophy and we have it here for just a little bit longer because in two quarters it will make its way back across the field but what a great piece of hardware right here that we've had the luxury of holding on to for the first two quarters of this match and we're excited to see one of these teams make history whether it's the first year head coach Aaron Matson or Duke hoisting it for the first time tonight absolutely let's take a look at the first two quarter of highlights for you as really the defense shine through no shots till very very late well, and Leah, we highlighted in the open how great UNC's press is and their ability to turn defense into offense. We've seen that. You know, we talked all about the Duke's defense, but I tell you what, Leah, UNC's defense has been outstanding tonight so far. And roughly 200 minutes now that Duke's defense has not allowed a goal. They have clamored down, but Carolina has responded as well as Duke had a very difficult time even getting the ball at one juncture over the halfway mark of the field. Yeah, Duke not really able to get numbers around the ball because of the high press from UNC. You see this crossing ball from Hannah Miller just trying to get something over to Logan Clouser as she comes in to the circle. And really, you know, other than one corner and that crossing ball, that's really been it for Duke's attack. Two shots on the game for Carolina, both by Peyton Worth, actually one by Charlie Bruder as well. And for Duke, Elena McVeigh with the only shot. There you see what is at stake here tonight. Duke trying for their first ACC championship. And for Carolina, it would be their 26th ACC title. So glad you could join us on this Friday night, Championship Friday, between these two great collegiate rivals. So just before the second quarter ended, like literally seconds before, Charlie, <laughs> Charlie Van Orshaw 
was given a green card as Plume Lammers was trying to get into the circle there, taken away. Uh, and Van Orschot there in the Batwoman mask is sitting down for two minutes. So a two minute advantage, which is now down to about a minute and six for the Blue Devils. and says, you know what, I've got some space here on the restart. I'm going to take it myself. Big ball across and unfortunately dangerous. Well, and I think that is where Duke needs to have a different mentality, Leah. They, they were so crisp in their passing mm -hmm. last week. It was beautiful two-touch hockey. They pre-scanned. They knew exactly where they were going to send the ball before they even received it. You know, and it's a lot of individual effort for Duke tonight. You're seeing them put their heads down. And by that point, they've got three UNC defenders in front of them. Corner called. And again, UNC showing how they're able to put that press on and turn defense into offense in the blink of an eye, Leah. Katie Dixon forcing the point. Yeah, just able to dump that into the foot of Josephine Veen. Dixon's time with the national team, no doubt about it, has provided her with much more confidence on the field, you see number 14 there is a stopper for UNC up top. Good look at the defense and how they will fly out. For Duke. Heck winding up, gets her own rebound, the pop over the top. With the balance act, and Carolina's on the board. This right here, Leah, is why you practice air dribbling the ball. You practice those 3D skills. We've seen Riley Heck pop the ball up and over keepers before, and she does it again. What a goal by Riley Heck. composed. Riley Heck isn't much of a, uh, you know, talker on the field. She gets her work done by her play on the field. And showing it right there, cool, calm, and collective, getting her own rebound. And that ends the streak of 166 minutes without a score against the Blue Devils. Heck's 11th of the season. Now let's see how the Blue Devils respond. They've got Hannah Miller off of the near post, trying to get that ball to her, broken up on the play by Dixon. Plume Lammers has Sada Hawk there, they decide to go low to Peyton Worth and they'll run out of real estate. Heck now has scored in six of the last seven games. And the Tar Heels are nine and three on the season when scoring first. Kind of a hush over the crowd right now here at Turf Field. That's actually just saw a glimmer there. Hannah Miller's brother Matt looking quite focused now. 
A lot of friends and family making the trip tonight, especially with the game being in prime time for the players. Curlin's gonna take the hit. Blue Devils being real patient here, trying to get a good look. Carolina tight marking in the circle, except for maybe up top where Josephine Veen is, letting her kind of run free. Smith met by McVeigh for a little bit. Good turnover. Clouser is taken out. I'm a little shocked, actually, that a card wasn't distributed. Well, and Leah, that whole play right there all happened because Elena McVeigh went ahead and put that high press on, pushing the ball from UNC to the side, making them make quick decisions. That second line of the press. And actually, as you see it there, I thought at first maybe Smith may have warranted the card, but actually on the replay, it was it was fine. It, it looked like incidental yeah, contact absolutely. to me, just two players being aggressive going yep. for the ball. But it is a corner call, nonetheless. The second corner for Duke. Curlin and McVeigh up top. Keep an eye on Clouser, of course. Number 11. And watch the slide, maybe, who knows, to Charlie Van Orschot. Under 10 minutes to go already in the third quarter. Time is just flying by here. Veen, the rebound is out. It'd be a corner as it touches off of Siana Ricardo. Sukic is there, actually, Macy Sukic up top. Another player, it's a sophomore who, who is always in the mix somewhere as well for Duke. Absolutely, and usually one of the strikers at the top of the circle next to Kieran, Kira Kurland. And Ralph Borsma for Duke today was talking about Macy Sukic and just talking about how sound her fundamentals are, how he struggles to find anything to really tweak yes. on yes. her technique because it is so picture perfect. Since the age of 14, she's been a member of USA Field Hockey. That's number six in white. And they slide it across. Nice easy pass out in front, it's laying out in front. Curlin tries to flick it home. Corner once again. All the Duke shots thus far in this game have come off of their corner opportunities. Set pieces with the clock stop. We saw just trying to change that direction. I would have loved to have seen that a little wider, looking to extend that post on that initial sweep. Fourth corner for the Blue Devils. McVeigh winds up. Ricochet by Renee Ricardo on the fly. And a long outlet out. Get it up ahead to Dixon. Nice recovery by Logan Clouser sprinting back to help her defense. Sukic is all alone. McVeigh couldn't look up far enough quickly there as she could feel the pitter patter of footsteps behind her. And I like the swing here. You know, Duke making some adjustments here in this third quarter. You're seeing them stretch the field laterally much more so than they did in the entire first half. We really saw all 11 players, you know, down one side of the field, allowing UNC to really move that ball at ease. But we're seeing a lot better stretching of the field from Duke this third quarter.
tomorrow morning, the ACC Huddle Crew will kick off your day in Raleigh, North Carolina. That's at 11 a.m. Eastern, the 60-minute pregame show leading up to Carolina and Campbell at noon. They'll have halftime and postgame following as Hawk runs it. End line, looking for that pass out in front. Curlin trying to control. Nice job by Kira to gather it in. They'll have the highlights and postgame for you throughout the day, and then after the game, set you up for the games in the evening. Of course, NC State in Miami coming up at 8. All games on the ACC Network for a complete wrap-up of the day's football action. Ball not touched by anyone. Carolina will be just as satisfied there to let that ball go and take the hit out. ACC, one of 10 conferences with the automatic bid this weekend. They'll be the first to finish up. Tomasi's got Hawk way ahead, now flying to the near post. Nice recovery by Duke's defense. Look out, Riley, Hawk, Riley Heck at the top of the circle. Big wind up and bounced in. A play that took a funny bounce. And Charlie Bruder and the Tar Heels have a 2 0 lead. And again, Leah, what a beautiful build up. Tomasi does a great job taking this ball. Just a little reverse slip, super selfless from Heck. Looking for Bruder right around that stroke mark. She tries to take one step. She actually tops that ball, but gets a little lucky bounce. And sometimes as a keeper, those are the hardest ones to be able to read. Two goals in six minutes and 19 seconds. Second goal of this tournament for Charlie Bruder as well. Freshman of the year in the ACC. And two nothing here as we get under six minutes to go. Heck given the assist, now a goal and, a, and an assist in the match. Yeah, a little former ACC freshman of the year, giving it to the ACC freshman of the year. Slip pass to Dixon, nicely done by Charlie Van Orschot, broken back up. Civitella has her pass broken back up by Zitska Bruning. The wall in the middle. Tomasi jabbed away by Miller. Best part is at least it slows up the process, allows the defense to set up. Great double team there outside the circle by Duke. That obstruction will lead us to corner number two of the third quarter. Absolutely. 
UNC with two plus goals in 52 of the last 58 games. If you go back over the last three seasons, they are one for four, one for three, excuse me, on the corner calls. They bring Bruning down to take the insert. A little bit different here as Smolinars plays it back to Bruner. The smash, Piper Hamps with the long save out. Second save for Hamps. Piper Hamsh has worked extensively with goalkeeper coach Jess Jekko and Jekko telling us yesterday that Piper's put the time in during the, uh, the off season, taking about 80 balls, each goalkeeper taking about 80 balls a day. And actually, Piper Hampshire, I think, got some help from the post. Katie Dixon was yeah. actually in yeah. Piper's line of vision, shielding her from that ball, but got a little help from the pipe. McVeigh looking to slide one through. Ball goes bouncing, bouncing around, but it will have to come back out to around the 25. Midfield side of the 25 for Curlin. ACC Fall Championships continue here on the ACC Network as Van Orschot with a big hit. Men's quarterfinal action starting at 2 p.m. Eastern on Sunday, continuing Wednesday with the semifinals. All matches right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app, the home of the ACC Championships. Hannah Miller working with the whistle, trying to get it up into Romay Ricardo for the call, but unable to, and the big hit out. Harkins trying to get a big ball inside as well, was trying to find McVeigh cut off there by Smith. McVeigh gets that backhander off. The field for the NCAAs. 18 teams hope to hear their names Sunday night. 10 o'clock on NCAA.com. Ten of them will know that they're going. Just nice to hear your name. Eight holding their breath. And the committee will have their hands full. So much parody this season, Leah, across the nation. It's been such a fun season of hockey. Under a minute to go here in the third. A couple of finals. Set for tomorrow, Patriot League. It'll be Lafayette and American. And then the A-10 tomorrow, St. Joe's and UMass. We'll go head to head for the A-10 championship. Ooh, nice ball ahead to Bruder. Charlie. And nice defense back by Mary Harkins, who comes in the scene. <clears throat> 25 seconds. Clock still running. Sliding it in. Cautiousness here by Duke as we approach the final ticks of the third. It's being set up right now. The automatic bid on the line. Riley Heck having one heck of an ACC championship. Tar Heels with the lead after three, two nothing. Tar Heels.
Bulls have dominated this ACC championship. This is the 41st year they have won 25 of those ACC championships, Suzanne, and on a run right now. Yeah, looking to make it number seven in a row. Erin Madsen looking to get her first as head coach. She's got five as a player. And the nice thing is not only do they get to hoist the trophy, but each player will receive a smaller version of that trophy to be able to take home for themselves. Dominance in the ACC. So one quarter left, two goals down. Duke went without a shot in the entire first half. Things changed and opened up a little bit for them, Suzanne. In that third. Yeah, you definitely saw the adjustments made going into the third. Less individual effort, more passing, trying to spread the field because UNC is so dangerous in tight spaces. They're able to get themselves and work out of tight spaces so quickly. And so to give them that opportunity, I mean, Duke was letting them have that small space. Worth with the centering pass. Nicely done on the cutoff. Feedback in again is a bevy of white jerseys around Plum Lammers. When you saw the lockdown defense right there, that was a prime example of why Duke has been so effective inside their defensive third. Curlin doing a nice job. Walking smoothly. Unfortunately, Hannah Miller can't handle it. This Duke squad has broken numerous records going back to the 90s this season. And for the Blue Devils, one thing that uh, they have consistently shared with us is that after COVID, that they, as a collective group, made a number of changes, belief changes, and work ethic changes, and it's paying off. Here's Heck, bouncing ball, Hawk. Ooh, goodness. Great opportunity there by Sana Hawk. You see another good opportunity kind of created by Heck there. And this one just squeeze, squeezes behind Van Orshot. Hawk with great hands, just a little wide. Crossing ball, tip. oh, tipped. I think the defense actually might have got a handle on that one going the opposite way. Good break. Take another good look here at this tip. Peyton Worth got a stick on that. And again, just sailing wide as UNC continues to notch the shots. Again, this is a team that averages 15 shots per game and a defense in Duke that averages only allowing eight shots per game. Well, UNC is already at nine.
Ricardo trying to slam one home. See Piper Hampshot in the back signaling to the players on the near sideline, <clears throat> excuse me, to, to move out and give some room. Harkins with a big bouncing ball ahead nicely to McVay who came back to it. Well, Lena can't hold on. Ooh, seats got burning with the pull. Hard whistle, and we are going to have a card. The card is on Yasmina Smolinars, and it is a green card. So with 9.53 to go, Yasmina Smolinars, number 22, will sit out for two minutes. A good opportunity here for Duga. That was just some extra physicality there by Smolinars, garnering that card. Peyton Worth looking to try to carry this as far as she possibly can. Duke has not been shut out this year. Working really hard here right now with about a minute 18 on the advantage. Best opportunity as we approach nine minutes to go in the game. Pam Buston looking on, looking at that clock. Taken away by Hawk. seconds left on the card to Smolinars. Tough spot in the corner. Goes the opposite way. We're back at even strength. Plays it down, Suzanne. We're we're about at 7:30 to, to go here in this match. You know what what's kind of evolving in you know Pam Buston best. You played for her. What is Coach thinking about right now as far as maybe trying to make some moves or it's tough two goals down. It's not like you're one goal down, right? Yeah, you know they got to get more build up possession first. You know they haven't Duke hasn't been able to string passes together. They. They're just not connecting like we've seen them connect so far this week and even last Friday. And without that possession, without that connection, why would you go ahead and pull Piper when you've been under pressure right. almost this entire quarter? So, you know, I think she wants to see some more glimmers of hope from her, sure. her midfield and her transition and uh, the striker unit before she makes any kind of movement pulling Piper out of the cage. Ricardo. Into Sana Hawk. And put up into Curlin's stick wisely. So take the long hit. And now the clock is really Carolina's friend here. As they do stop the clock with two balls out on the field. Restart on the official's whistle. 6.22 to go in the match. Up, 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 up. 
Smolinars with the crossing ball in front. Heck with the backhander. The rebound is out. Corner. Yeah, that rebound just a little too dangerous coming out. Getting that corner call for the heels. Great footwork there by Heck. Knows the pressure is on her left-hand side. She shifts to her backhand. Choked up a little bit too, Suzanne. What, when the player chokes up like that, what, as far as controlling the stick, what does that do? Well, and just like in baseball or softball, right? It gives you more control. It shortens up that backswing. It's gonna be a quicker shot. It's gonna be quicker contact with the ball. So yeah, it applies to any, you know, bat type sport. Worth up top. Big swipe at it. Bouncing ball in front. Nice defensive save. Nice play there by Joe Veen. Coming up with that defensive save for the Blue Devils. That ball was kind of spinning funny there on the line. Good post position there for Veen to come up with that ball. Slip up to Bruder. Up to Heck, does not have numbers. But you see the Tar Heel Blue coming in droves. You saw Peyton Worth, you saw Sana Hawk. They were on their horses and they were in the circle in a hurry to get support around that ball. Numbers in front of the ball. Now separating themselves as Hawk is up at the top of the circle, guarded by, lightly by Charlie Van Orshot there. And Bruder now sliding to the top as the ball moves to the outside. certainly dictating the tempo here in the last seven minutes. Bruning to Riley Heck. Oh, nice little flip to Hawk, walking it in off of a foot, and that'll be a corner. such selfless hockey tonight, Leah. You know, you saw that slip pass. She could have worked herself into a position to be able to take that shot on her own stick, but she knew Hawk driving the baseline. She slips the ball over to her. And Hawk finds a foot to get that corner call. Four fourteen to go. Peyton Worth calling out the play. The perspective from Duke's defense. Brewer, the big wind up, my goodness. Too high, dangerous. Yikes. Yeah, that's a hard pass for me to fly on that. <laughs> I don't care what you have on. Nope, you can nope. have a sumo wrestler puffy outfit on. That's not <laughs> happening. It's not happening. Miller now has McVeigh inside the circle being marked quite heavily by Rene Ricardo. Held whistle, held whistle. Hannah Miller jumps up and down and gets the corner call. And Hannah Miller just always seems to be the spark that lights Duke's fire. A great drive there by Miller. You saw her continue to push the envelope to get that call. And Duke now with a good opportunity to cut the lead in half. You see Hannah Miller walking extremely slow over to where she's gonna insert the ball from. She's giving her team the ability to breathe, to regroup for her strikers to be able to catch their breath. So when they go to strike this ball, 
They're composed, they're calm, they're cool, they're collected. Looking for the back of the cage. They go short to Clouser. Looking for that redirect, doesn't happen. <clears throat> Excuse me, but they do get the long hit out of it. Harkins trying to work quickly. And now Piper Hampsh comes out of the game. Barb Civitella, number 26, enters as the extra field player with 324 clock is still moving. And that makes sense, right, Leah? They're in there attacking third. They're not under UNC's pressure anymore. Get the additional field player, push that ball up, push numbers up. Only two shots on cage right now by Duke. As the clock continues to run under three minutes to go in the match. Tar Heels in no hurry at all to take this free hit right now. Charlie Van Orshot running onto it. Other way. Blue Devils working quickly. They do have the extra field player. Clouser to, to Miller, to Miller. Winds up, no call. They were looking for it. They were fortunate, Carolina, because they had backed off the play. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Miller able to get that shot off. You actually see UNC's defense really holding back here. They know they've got to combat the extra field player. And again, they've got the two goal lead. They've got right. the insurance goal. And some people might say, well, hey, you know, they've got the empty net like in ice hockey, right? Why not run, right, right not run to the cage and get that, get that goal and the thought process behind that, Suzanne? Well, you know, they respect their opponent and their opponent's ability to strike and strike an open field play. So they're not gonna just allow Duke to get a, a big turnover because they're pushing the ball forward or they're making, you know, careless mistakes possessing the ball. They respect their opponent. Civitella trying to control and shovel it in. Under a minute to go. And Duke asking for it to be reviewed. Both teams do have the reviews. This will be the first one of the night. Jerry Lucas, our review so umpire. Duke is looking for a foot at the top of the circle. Can you hear? You're seeing what the umpires are reviewing right now and Jerry Lucas. It looks like upon that initial pull by Civitella, it could have hit Romay. Shannon, I have advice for you. There is a foot on North Carolina inside the circle, so restart with corner. Good job by Hannah Miller as the captain to go over and ask for that review. Yeah, this first pull, you can see it bounces off Romay Ricardo's foot, getting that corner call. So Duke will retain their video referral. Fifty-three point six to go. Miller 
having one last chat with Logan Clouser there as Carolina's defense puts their equipment on. Tar Heels are ready to run the field here in 53.6 seconds. But Duke trying to throw that opportunity. Curlin with the pull and the slide across. McVeigh, bouncing ball, dribbling around. Tough spot on the field. Duke's ball, 32 seconds. And it's a hit coming out. Maddie Kahn says, let's settle this down. No reason to take that hit out unless we're encouraged to. Be smart. Yeah, and UNC is just gonna possess the ball here. Hit it into open space. Let the seconds tick down off this clock. And Leah, it's seven. 26th ACC title for Carolina. Their seventh in a row, two nothing over Duke. celebrating that automatic bid one of ten in the NCAAs. Congratulations too to Erin Matson, her first ACC championship as a coach. Yeah, and you know, when we talked to Coach Matson this afternoon, Leah, she said, I want my team to come out to be intense, bring that intensity, set the tone, play a consistent 60 minutes of hockey. And Leah, they did just that tonight. Celebration with the captains. Rene Ricardo there holding that trophy and everybody's all smiles right now. Second longest streak in ACC history. Of course, they also own the first longest streak in ACC history at the beginning of all of this back in 1983. 